thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Good morning. I, I'm hyped too, by the way. I uh, I saw your uh, your Twitter, I guess, beef on cornbread uh, on sweet versus regular cornbread, and uh, and I had to weigh in on that. But no, just listening to you and uh, and getting excited, the excitement that you have for this interview, man, it's gotten me pumped too. Well, I, I'm pumped because I I was one of those guys sitting in that in that team room that that you, that you talk to and you go around the country and you, and you speak to and and you know. I'm one of those guys, you know. Yep. Um, I was not raised by my mother. I was not raised by my by my father. I was raised by my great uncle, and so um, I didn't I didn't have that that mother there. Uh, I didn't have that father there, um, and so I kind of had to learn on the on the on the on the fly. Now I was blessed to have a great uncle that taught me uh, right from wrong. That taught me uh, the value of respect, the the, the value of hard work. And, and treating people the way they should be treated, and so I'm very, very blessed. But uh, I play with guys that just did not have that that same um, support. That did not have that same setup. I mean, we, you you come across so many players across college football where they just they have no clue. They didn't have any guidance. Uh, they didn't have any stability. And so when they get to a place like a Tennessee or Ohio State, when mm-hmm. their structure, they absolutely yep. crumble. They just they don't know what to do. And so. I think what you're doing is amazing. I guess my first question is, like, what was the what was it an incident that triggered you know you taking that first step, you getting into action? Was it uh, maybe what's going on at Baylor, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. with Joe Mixon? Mm-hmm. Like, what was it that you were like, you know what? I've been saying this for a long time that something needs to happen. I'm going to be that one person that makes it happen. Was it one incident uh, that that forced you into action? Well, first of all, let me say this about your previous comments. I think. That is why uh, a lot of these players, and here's how I judge whether or not a, a talk went well, right, mm-hmm. is the afterwards. And so I, I say to a, uh, to a coach, I say, I'll stay as long as you want. You know, a lot of times I'll stay overnight and I'll meet with guys afterwards. But I always judge uh, how much the message hit home by the people that stay afterwards. And, and a lot of times there's 30, 40, 50 players waiting to talk to me mm-hmm. and want to tell me their stories. And what I think happens is, is, as you mentioned, a lot of them have not had, uh, or they have or they haven't, but they, they gravitate towards that, that female, you know, one that, that's in the business, understands the business, but is a lot like a big sister, an aunt, dare I say, mom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they, they tell me these things. And the other thing, is that to your point, before I answer your question is, you know, I get a lot from people that are ignorant, and I have to hold my tongue because I'm a spicy Latina. I get a yeah. lot from people... <laughs> that say right is right and wrong is wrong, and they should know that. You know, that's not true, dude, and woman at the airport. It's not true because you don't know what people have seen growing up. You don't know if they've seen dad hit mom. You don't know if mom wasn't there. You don't know if they were raised by grandmother. You don't know if they mom was a drug addict. You know, I had two of those in, in one school, uh, and guys look completely different from different parts of the country, different color skin. So you don't know that. And so what I learned very quickly about uh, six months in of doing this for almost two years in August was it's not enough to say be a good man, right? It's not enough to say that. What I do is we talk about what does it mean to be a king? What, what does that look like on an everyday basis? How do we walk that out? Because as they tell me, it's easy to be a dog. It's easy. And I say, yeah, it is easy to be a dog. It's hard to be a king, mm. right? It, it, it's harder. But let me tell you something, baby. Once, once you live as a king and you breathe that rarefied air, you will never go back to being a dog. You will never settle for that anymore. And so uh, I just want to say that to your first, to your first statement. But the, but the answer to your question is, it was summer of 2016, and it was that dark summer for college football. And as a radio host like yourself, I would have to back up from uh, you know my serious breaks and go cry, Jason. Because if you look at the news that summer, it was negative, 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 negative. It was sexual violence, domestic violence, Baylor. We were coming off the heels not too long of Penn State. And if you look at the at Fox Sports, ESPN, CBS Sports, that summer, the first five headlines were negative, and I am a do-something girl. God, that's how God made me. Mm-hmm. And so I know that there are a lot of people out there that just said, oh, that's just college football. That is the way it is. You know, boys will be boys. Hey, you know, this, this, is, this is the way of the world now. And to me, that wasn't enough, Jason. Stop. To me, I said, I've been covering these guys at that time for, you know, 12 years, 10 years on, on a professional level and, and covering the sport and giving my – my life to this sport, 
And I said, that's not enough. And I said, what if I created a curriculum, super simple stuff, like who are you away from the football field? What if you're never a football player? Because one day football is going to be done with you, and I want you to have an identity beyond football. You were not created to play football. That is a platform for which that you can change the world. And so, you know, I, I created this curriculum, and, uh, and then lo and behold, a friend of mine, Dr. Elko, a famous sports psychologist, called and said, hey, by the way, Jimbo Fisher wants you down at FSU. And e- even covering college football, I never put two and two together that I was going to take it there. I was going to take it to high schools, but now what I'm doing is I'm teaching these players that I that I encounter that want to do this. I'm teaching them how to go into their area high schools with changing the narrative. And because we know and we all know that that young people are going to listen to the star athlete more than they're going to listen to me. Well, Rachel, in doing what you've been doing, and obviously you've talked to um, hundreds and hundreds of guys at this point, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What, what's probably the, the coolest story that you can tell from this experience that you've had so mm. far? Oh, man, so many cool stories. How many hours do you have? Uh, <laughs> we got time. Seriously, yeah, go for it. 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 It's, it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I had a, a guy at Auburn. I'll try not to cry uh, when I when I tell you this story. I had a guy at Auburn, and he messaged me afterwards. He stayed afterwards, and we hugged. I've got a picture of him and, and all that, and he messaged me afterwards. Because what happens is I never want to be the person that come in, comes in for 55 minutes, right, and, and leave. I, I tell him, I, I want to be a lifer for you. If you'll let me, I'll, I'll be the, the, you know, the um, recommendation on your resume. Uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'll be the one that you call for, for girlfriend advice, which they do. You know, I'll pray with you when your daddy's sick, got cancer in stage four, which is going on with one of our players right now. If you want to change the world, you tell me how it is you want to change the world, and I'll assist you. If you want to go into high schools, I'll assist you, and I'll teach you how to be a public speaker and give you a tangible skill. So these are all things that are happening. But when I left Auburn that day, uh, a young a young man said, you know, uh, Rachel, I got to tell you a story. He said, I never want to be anything like my daddy. He said, um, you know, in, in so many words, he didn't say it. The, the, he, it was a deadbeat dad, right? He wasn't there for him. And he said, I recognize after your talk that in a lot of ways I was turning out just like him. Oh. And he said, because of you, um, I picked up the phone and I called my father and I told him I forgave him for being absent in my life. Oh. And he said, I now feel like a two-ton weight has been lifted off my chest and I can be the man that God created me to be. And that player invited me to the Senior Bowl to meet his family. Oh. He said, my whole family knows who you are. And let me tell you something. As a coach, you don't think that young man's going to perform better on the field? Is going to perform better in the classroom because he's not carrying this weight? Another story Quickly, a, a, a player of mine at Buffalo named Tatum Slack, uh, I spoke to them last year, uh, last August, and when Tyler Holinsky killed himself uh, at Washington State, he called me and he said, Rachel, that was my high school teammate. And I said, oh, my gosh, Tatum, I'm so sorry. And he said, would you go to Washington State? And I said, I will. I absolutely will. So I called up Mike Leach because I used to work with him at Sirius, and I said, this is you know, Tyler has, has or excuse me, Tyler's teammate has asked me to, to come. And so I went and spoke there a couple of months later after uh, Coach Leach said, let's let the scab heal over. And so I went there and, uh, and just has an amazing opportunity at Washington State. And that player that prompted me to go there uh, is now starting a mental health campaign for athletes, for collegiate athletes, for football players, in, in the college level, because he did a he did a study with his players and got him to close their eyes, and found out that a number of them suffer from depression, have, have thought about suicide. I mean, these are football players, and I think fans don't get uh, they, they just don't get that young men are carrying a lot of things, and they see the guy in the helmet, mm-hmm. they see the guy on the field, and they don't know that somebody's son. They do know it's somebody's son, somebody's grandson, somebody's brother. But they don't know the things that he's carrying. It's hard. I, I interviewed Derrick Henry the other day. You know, Derrick Henry told me on stage in an award show that he considered leaving Alabama. That that it, he was he was you know struggling. He was stressed out. Derrick Henry almost never was at Alabama if he would have followed through with that with leaving. These guys struggle big time, and so there's stories across the board. But those are two that come to mind. You mentioned it, Rachel. That that this this helps football teams. You know, when you, have, when you have an individual that understands his purpose and he, he lifts that weight off his shoulders, he can be a better 
He could be a, he could be a better student. He could be a better friend. Yep. He could be a better son, husband, girl, bo- you know, boyfriend, whatever. He could he could be better, and he could be a better teammate because now he knows his purpose. Yeah. He's working harder. He's studying. He's being a teammate that he can be, and now he maybe turns into a leader. And yeah. we know how college football works. You can only do so much as a coach. You can recruit. You can teach X's yep. and O's. But at the end of the day, you need leaders inside your locker room. And so, yeah, this is this is about you know creating young men and 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 you know letting these guys know that they are kings and changing narratives. But y- your work can actually help football team win games on the field too. Absolutely. I had a guy at another school. He waited until everybody left, and he just started bawling. And then I'm you know then I'm crying right. And he said to me, my coaches have pretty much given up on me. My teammates have, you know, they're at their wits end with me. I I keep my book bag on. I come late. I leave early. And he said, they think I'm a troublemaker. And he said what they don't know is that my mom was raped at the housing complex, and there were people in earshot of her, and she was screaming, and no one helped her. And he said, I'm so angry. I'm so depressed. I'm so angry. I'm not a troublemaker, Rachel. And with his permission, we went to the coach, and I told the coach, and the coach emailed me a couple of days later and said, um, he's agreed to get counseling, and because of you, we did not lose him. Thank you so much. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Rachel Barbo here on the Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue, uh, Sirius XM, ESPN. She's she's there. She's also uh, working with Gridiron now, uh, changing the narrative, and she's been doing this for two years. Two years now. What what's the what's the goal? What's the long term goal? Uh, I know uh, you 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 share with us why you got it started, um, mm-hmm. but now. Obviously, you're seeing the impact that you're making in these young men's lives with these teams. What is the long-term goal for you? That's such a great question, and thank you for that. And the long-term goal is this. As I mentioned earlier, I never wanted to be somebody who came for 55 minutes and left. I want to be a part of these programs. I want to be a resource. I want to be somebody that, that a coach can call before you have an issue, right, not after you have an issue. Uh, I had a coach call me recently. Uh, because he had, he, they had a, uh, an issue with their with the, a player and his girlfriend. It wasn't what you think, what you immediately go to. It was a girlfriend came into town, thought he was cheating, broke his laptop in two, and pepper sprayed him. Uh, it just went absolutely crazy. And I will defend these guys, and I will I will fight for them because there's always two sides to a story. And so, uh, coaches call me as a resource before you have an issue. But the long term goal is this. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I, I want to have a lasting goal, and so I started working with the NCAA uh, the end of last year, right before the national championship, and we created, uh, one, I created a foundation, a nonprofit, and two, we created a Changing the Narrative Award. And so what happens is FIU, Butch Davis is a dear friend of mine, I'll go down to him uh, in July, and the whole team will vote on one player that most exemplifies changing the narrative tenet. So he's thoughtful, he's kind, he's extraordinary. He protects, respects, and cherishes women. He changes his team, his university, his community. He is just extra in every way, like guacamole. I mean, he's awesome. And so <laughs> <laughs> they vote on it. They vote on it, not me, the, the players, the coaches, everybody. And that man wins a change in the, change in the narrative award. And when he uh, exhausts his eligibility or leaves campus uh, to pursue football dreams, whatever it may be, then he is eligible for a sizable financial grant to start his own foundation. Mm. So he can either do that, uh, start his own foundation, or he can pour it into another foundation, not a business, a foundation. And so the coolest part of that is you look back in 10 years and you've got 30, 40, 50 young men uh, starting their own changing the narrative, whatever it is that means something to them, whether it's the homeless twins under a bridge, one kid told me, or having noise-canceling headsets for kids with autism because he had an autistic sister, or doing after-school camps for kids in the neighborhood that, that you know they want to help them get out because they got out. So whatever it is that's close and near and dear to their hearts, like, for example, one of my guys, Bradley Bozeman, was picked on and bullied in high school, and because of my program, he started an anti-bullying campaign while he was preparing for the draft and went to seven middle schools uh, and started this anti-bullying campaign. So whatever it is that they're crazy about, I help them. So that's phase one. And phase two is I go back in uh, and, and, and I'm a resource, but we also, anybody who wants to, to learn change in the narrative and also learn a tangible skill, which is public speaking, I go in and teach them the art of public speaking and then help work to get them into high schools so they can start to affect 
13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, because they're going to listen to DeAndre Francois. They're going to listen to these guys. They're going to listen to these athletes. And so that's the long-term goal. And uh, it, we're now a foundation, a nonprofit. And when you donate, you donate to these, uh, to these grants to giving these young men a future. And I could not uh, – listen, I vote for the Heisman guys. I, uh, I host the college football playoff. But I can tell you – I don't have kids yet, so, so I exclude that. But I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the most rewarding thing I have ever done with my life. And you've done a lot, uh, Rachel, in your career. I mean um – and I remember two years ago, I don't know if you remember me, uh, SEC Media Days. I didn't go last year because my grandma passed, but I, I went a uh, year before last, and I saw you, like, and you're a leader. Like, I saw you, like, gathering all the women that cover <laughs> the SEC, and you guys were like, hey, we're about to have a dinner. This is the women of the SEC, baby. And, yeah. and you were leading the charge. I just was like, who is, who is that, man? She is, <laughs> boy, she is running the show. I mean, you can just tell. Um, and, and, and. I'm just, I, I, again, I'm so excited. You know, I had Coach Pruitt on yesterday, and that was that was a big deal. That was huge. I mean, we had yeah. you know, tons of people listening. But I'll just be honest, I'm more excited and pumped up for this because I know what um, the development of, of a young man can really, really mean. I have three daughters, and my, my job is to show them what they should be looking for when they are old enough to, 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 to choose a mate. So that way they have the right person um, in their lives. And so what you're doing is super, super, super important. And if I'm a parent, I definitely want you around uh, my son as much as possible. How, how can we help you, not help you, help our people right here in Knoxville? Uh, we got to yeah. have you here in Knoxville. Uh, there's a lot of men, young men, that, that <laughs> need your perspective. What can we do to, to get you here in Knoxville? Well, first of all, I want to come. The, the invitation is is, uh, is open. I tried to come under the former regime, but that did not work. Um, I'll just leave that at that. Hmm. Uh, Rachel, don't get me started, girl. Don't get don't woo, don't get me started, I'm Rachel. Everything, right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Rachel, don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started on that last regime. Now I'm trying to be nice today. <laughs> right, me too. I am also trying to be nice. I am also trying to be above board and classy. Okay. Uh, so I, I tried to come, and uh, the and it did not uh, that did not transpire. And so I would love, love, love to uh, to come and affect the the athletes there at Tennessee. I've known Jeremy for years, covering him at different stops and and at Alabama as well. Uh, and would love, love, love to do that and and come and affect you know, the, the young men there. And, and the coolest thing is, is uh, USA Today, the Tennessee, and wrote a piece on me, and, uh, and Commissioner Sankey got a hold of it at the SEC. And, uh, you know, obviously I know uh, Commissioner Sankey and knew uh, Commissioner Sly for many years, and he sent it to all of his leaders and said, you know, this is, this, she, she's got something good going on here. And so they've invited me to address their student leaders, their student athlete leaders, there's 70 of them, uh, at the beginning of July in Birmingham. So for me, there is, you know, that's pretty much the, one of the highest honors when the conference commissioner of one of the greatest conferences in, in all of sport says, come and address our leaders. That's a big deal. But yes, I would love to come to Knoxville. And, and you know, what I do is I, I train these young men and, and we have them going to high schools. But that's not to say I wouldn't speak to your group or to your, your church or whatever it may be. You, gra- you know, you gather some use. I can do that. But for me, uh, it, it's it's everything. When a when a young man, it was my birthday last week, and and a couple of my players reached out to me and said, you, know, you changed my life. You know, I appreciate you. Thank you for being a queen. You know, thank you for making me a king. Give me realize I'm a king. Because here's the deal: mm-hmm. call somebody, call somebody by who they were created to be, and watch them rise up to it. Mm. Call them by who they were. All the possibility. And all the wonder and everything that they were created to be, because they're a miracle. Call them by that. Call them by a king or a queen, because I do speak to women, too. But call them by that and watch them rise up to it. I have literally watched men's souls rise up to to what they were created to be. And, and just, just for believing in them, guys, just for the simple fact of believing in them, telling them, you were created for more, baby. You were created to set the world on fire with your good deeds. You were created to change the narrative in college football in the world. And to your point for your daughters, 
Cecil Hurt, the longtime editor of the Tuscaloosa News, said to me, you don't get it, Rachel, after I spoke at Alabama. He said, you think you're affecting one. He said, but these guys go back to their home mm-hmm. and they break the cycle of, uh, you know, of, of substance abuse, mm-hmm. of domestic violence, of physical, you know, whatever it mm-hmm. may be, emotional. And, and he said, he, then you, you've affected the family mm-hmm. and then you affect the kids they raise yep. and then the kids that they raise and the kids that they raise. He said, you just don't. And I mean, I sat in, the, in, a, in a restaurant parking lot was just crying when he said this to me. He said, it's really generational. You're not. No creating doubt. one king or queen, right. you're creating the next and the next and the next and the next because you're telling them who they were creating to be beyond football. Because here's the thing, I think it, uh, Aaron Taylor is a really good friend of mine, and we're working together on some stuff. He, you know, obviously offensive lineman for Notre Dame. And he said, he said we were talking about the statistics, and I think it's like it's, 90, it's 91%, 90% of NFL players within five years of being out of the league are, are drug addicted broke, divorced, or all of the above. And I have a strong feeling, a strong correlation. But that's because when football is done with them, they have no identity. Mm-hmm. They, have, they don't know who they are because it's always been football. And people around them have told them they love them because they're good at football, mm. right? And yes. so I want them to start thinking about who are you away from the football field? What kind of legacy will you leave? Because Tennessee, let's just use an example, is not your purpose. It's your platform. Mm. You, are, you can use social media, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Are you retweeting your horoscope? Are you using your, your social media for something positive and something good? And so you really just open their eyes and get them to start looking at it differently. And, and I can tell you, I mean, it's working because I have young men that are changing the narrative on a daily basis. Uh, two Two-part question here before we get you out of here, Rachel. Uh, What a powerful interview. I'm getting so much uh, positive feedback uh, here on my phone. Twitter's going crazy. Um, So I I can't wait to to repost this interview. But two-part question here. Um, How can people... How can people yeah. follow your work, follow you, uh, see what you're doing? And, and then uh, second question, uh, more on a, on, a, on, a, on a laughing note, do you prefer <laughs> sweet or unsweet cornbread, Rachel? This is, this, is a serious, <laughs> this is a serious topic around here. Like, we got to know where you stand on this. this is, we got to get to the bottom of this, this debate, sweet or unsweet cornbread. Yeah. Okay. First of all, they can go to I'm changing the narrative dot org. That's I'm changing the narrative. So as if you're taking ownership, not just changing the narrative, it's I'm changing the narrative because we can be kings and queens in our daily life every single day, right? It means putting others before uh, ourselves. It means the smallest things. It means checking on people. It means asking about people. It means following through. It means accountability. Guys, when you screw up, Say I screwed up. Mm -hmm. Say I'm sorry, right? Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Character is who you are when no one's looking. Uh, And, you know, so that's the first thing. I'm changing the narrative.org is where they can go to support. It's a tax write off. If you want to donate, you are donating literally to these endowments, to these grants that these players get when they leave school to start their own foundation or donate to a foundation that's already. Uh, in progress, so they can they can change the world. You are a part of it, uh, and and so we so appreciate that. And it's tax deductible. I'm changing the narrative. dot org. And on the cornbread, I I like uh, the non sweet cornbread, but baby, I put like a half a thing of butter on it. Like uh, <laughs> butter both sides. Yes, we're gonna let it soak in and Preach. then put some more mm-hmm. butter mm-hmm. on it. Preach. Uh, I had an adopted grandfather that I have his cast iron skillet. Yes, and. Uh, and we make cornbread in those cast iron skillets, and ooh, it is like yes. slap your mama good. I mean, that's some good stuff. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I knew you had it all. I knew you had it all. Total package. <laughs> 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 hey, Rachel, thanks so much for your time. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, um, I will be uh, talking to you here soon off, off air because uh, I want to definitely get involved and, uh, and help. And uh, I look forward to following you and, and being involved and, and seeing uh, how I can help change, change the narrative and let these young men know that they are kings. Well, and, and I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. Thank you for having heart to get it. You know, uh, you, are, you are facilitating the message. You're the conduit because you get it, because mm-hmm. you reached out, because you said, wow, that there is something there. Not everybody gets it, right? Not everybody in the, in the media gets it. And that's okay, but I am so grateful for people like you who get it and say, let's help her spread this message. Let's change lives because 
for me, it's one life change. Yes. And there have been many, many more than one. I mean, I've already been talking to a couple of my guys this morning, you know, so... So thank you for having the heart to get it and the eyes to see it. I'm so appreciative of you. Rachel Barbo. Wow. Dynamic. <laughs> dynamic. Good art now. Uh, ESPN. Uh, Sirius XM. And uh, I'm changing the narrative.org is, is where you can go and contribute and see all the awesome work that they're doing. Hey, Rachel, thanks so much. I hope you have a great rest of your morning. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care.